Hello everyone, it's me Varus, and in this video, I'm going to give you my final winter forecast number three, um, since it's the first day of December, and so yeah, I hope you enjoy. This will be the last winter forecast for this upcoming winter, but um, if I do need to make a couple other small forecasts, I will. But this is the this is the main one. This is the one right here. Um, it is actually the same template I made my winter forecast two from. I just tweaked a couple things because I mean it is looking pretty similar to my winter forecast too the maps will be really similar but there are definitely a couple notable changes that i want to go over so i hope you enjoy and yeah let's get right into it so starting out with a little bit of graphics uh, graph graphs and data we have our cdas nino 3.4 index and so that is basically like la nina enzo and we were projected to get a La Nina, La Nina this winter. However, we're actually going to be getting, it looks like, a cool end zone neutral, which is when values are between 0, 0.0 and zero and below 0. 0.5. That's a cool neutral, cool end zone neutral. So right now, actually, it's at negative 0. 0.8. So it is actually technically a La Nina right now. But I do, ex this is going to moderate and actually go back up by the time we get possibly right near January, and we should be back into cool um, Enzo territory, and so that's when the effects of winter will really start be take, will really start to be becoming um, noticeable. So that's that index right now. You can see how we were cooling down through September uh, up till the beginning of November. But we are finally kind of starting to get a slight moderation trend as we get into the winter months. So that's the La, La Nina or La Nina Enzo. Um, now getting into my forecast, I'm gonna just jump right into it. How to make this on the fly? Temperature forecast very very similar. Uh, cooler temperatures. What I have done from my last forecast is I've kind of pulled this colder air deeper. Now that I think we're gonna get a bit of more of an Enzo neutral, I feel like this cold air will be more prevalent and we'll have more shots of colder air into like the Midwest, Northeast, but I'll overall still think it'll be slightly above average in kind of these areas. So watch out for that. But yeah, cooler than average in the North Central and Pacific Northwest, cool shots coming into the Midwest and Northeast, generally above average though in those areas, as well as the South and Southwest, as well as mainly the California and the Western coast looks to be around average okay right here is where it'll be average and this is where our storm track could be lots of the times okay lots of inland cutters we could see this is actually kind of a weird storm track um but an endo neutral lots of weird things can happen i feel like that could be a storm track we're gonna have several storm tracks i mean we can have one again this one riding both both gradients we could even have a nor'easter in enzo neutral i mean it's not too uncommon uh we could have a couple miller a's and miller b's coming through so lots of storm tracks on the table with the enzo neutral enzo neutral just brings a wide plate of storm tracks and impacts so yeah but there's your temperature forecast now getting into precipitation forecast what i have done is actually took in this precipitation and moved it slightly more eastward and kind of shifted this drier uh, precipitation back west. And at Enzo Neutral, we see much more precipitation in this area. And I really think that's going to be the case. So high, lots of precipitation in the northeast, midwest, north central U.S. Um, and even the Pacific Northwest will likely stay wet as well. And then drier in the desert southwest, mid-south, uh, southwest U.S. and areas of the southeast okay such as like louisiana Miss mississippi arkansas areas of alabama etc and the panhandle of florida so that's that forecast for the precipitation again lots of precipitation gonna be up here especially with all the active storms um kind of going all just rotating around that and very dry especially in the desert southwest thus the name desert southwest so that's what i'm expecting for end zone neutral you usually see um a kind of a flow like this uh storms could come out down like this like a clipper almost and bring precipitation i mean this wouldn't be an ideal clipper track but you know i mean clippers like that some clippers come down like that but yeah that's my precipitation forecast and then getting into what you've all been waiting for the overall forecast very 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 similar 
um, to my winter forecast number two. So, go west to east. Starting in the Pacific Northwest, a wintry and wet winter is expected. So, I do think you all will have lots of cool shots, some snow, uh, rain at times, especially in the um, lower elevations. But it will be a wintry and wet winter for you all. Now, moving south and east into the purple, you see big mountain snows. So, lots of snow from the mountains, especially mountains in California, uh, Idaho, Utah near Salt Lake City, areas of Colorado, obviously Wyoming, Southwest Wyoming, um, areas of Arizona and New Mexico. So lots of mountain snows is expected over here in this purple zone. If you are in the lower elevations, I would expect more of an average winter for you guys. Now going south from there, a warm and dry winter is expected for the desert southwest, including Southern California, or SoCal, uh, Southern New Mexico and Arizona, and southern Texas, most of Texas technically, um, for this upcoming winter, including Houston, Dallas right on the edge of this brown and green zone, but most of Texas should be experiencing a warm and dry winter. Now, moving east of that, we're going to go into this kind of greenish area. Stormy, a couple wintry surprises. So it will be stormy, it may be dry at times, but a couple wintry surprises especially if you are circled here, especially here. I tell you, especially here, I, I could see some wintry, like, even over here, coastal, maybe, um, North Carolina. I feel like in these areas, um, even getting back into Texas, in these areas, I feel like a wintry surprise could be there. Like, I feel like you guys could see some wintry precipitation more often this winter than you see in other winters, given that we have an enzo neutral, and those do favor um, some cooler temperatures and more wintry shots up here. I'm not saying you guys, so I don't think um, don't, it's possible. I think it could happen for sure, but don't kind of, don't bet on it, okay? Like, I definitely think it could happen. I, don't, I think it will happen uh, in some form or shape. Um, whether it's over here in the mountains of Tennessee, gets into northwest Georgia, or if it's kind of North Carolina, Virginia. I think it's going to happen somewhere, but don't get too excited just yet because um, it depends. I mean, I don't know when we're going to have a wintry surprise, but I do think wintry precipitation is definitely possible for the extreme northern portions of this green zone. Besides the northern portions of the wintry of this zone for wintry surprises, mainly just going to be stormy, dry, and wet for the other regions um, in this zone. Now we'll move north and west into this kind of Sahar Saharan kind of color, this light brown tan color. Warmer, drier, but wintry. So I do think it will be a warmer, drier winter. But I do think it will remain wintry, especially for areas of Kansas and Missouri, getting into Illinois. Even the panhandle of Oklahoma, I think, will be much more wintry. Even areas of Arkansas, maybe over here in Tennessee, Kentucky. Definitely, I think it will be wintry, but I do think it will be a slightly warmer and drier winter than average. Then we'll move back east, and we'll get into this red, the winter battle zone. This includes Boston. Okay, Boston, you are right on the edge of the um, kind of the dark blue and red, but I mean, you, you are on I-95, and I would say that you're part of the red. So Boston's in the red. I would even argue Hartford um, could be a battle zone too. Um, Trenton, Philadelphia, Baltimore, D.C., New York City, um, all these areas, okay? All these areas, I think, if you're on this yellow, I-95 quarter, basically, I feel like Richmond, um, I feel like this is the winter battle zone, okay? This is the winter battle zone. Probably should have extended the red maybe more up into here. Um, just imagine that I did, okay? <laughs> But I do think winter battle zone is likely in this in this region. Okay, right here. Okay, winter battle zone, wintry weather. We're gonna have several storms. We can we might have a storm that kind of cuts in inland and brings mostly rain. We could have a storm that kind of goes south, brings snow to the north. We could have a storm that kind of starts south and then cuts in. So we could have several types of storms. We could have a clipper system. We could have a nor'easter winter battle zone right in this area and then moving north many interior snows so especially in uh, interior northeast so i'd say right into there 
expects many interior snows. Uh, it's probably more like that ish. Uh, interior snowfalls. Lots of storms make well, are gonna cut. Whether it's a, a firm cut into like Pittsburgh region like that, um, or if it's like something that kind of cuts into the Great Lakes, something like that. Many interior snows. I think the interior northeast won't be too disappointed this winter. Lastly, going to go up north and west into this pink worst of winter. This is where I think we're going to have the most cold shots, most times linking up with precip. Comma head storms, especially later in the season, your classic comma heads. I think it's going to be worth the winter. Now, if I had to pick which area, like, would it be more worst um, in the western portion or eastern portion? I would go with the eastern portion, okay? Given we're starting to shift into an end zone neutral we're going to have better chances, I feel like, over here rather than over here. So I do think worst of winter, if the the worst, worst of winter portion, the worst of the worst of winter would be over here in the east. Minnesota, Iowa, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, the UP, obviously, Illinois, Chicago, right on the border, um, but mainly those areas. And then I do still think Nebraska, the Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, northern Kansas, maybe extreme northwestern Missouri will also get into some pretty big snow totals and cold weather. So that's my overall forecast. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And then lastly, we do actually have our final details. So I'll go each bullet point. Cool Enzo is likely. This is something to take note of as we head in late into later this month and through the month of December. Now, a mostly cool December looks likely for the eastern U.S. Snow lovers usually like these years as they have a favorable clipper pattern and light snows. Clipper, light snows. As we get deeper, depending on Enzo, PNA, and AO, a warmer January may occur, okay, in the east, bringing more inland cutting systems and more snow to the west. Now, with this, a cooler February looks possible, where snow events may come back in the east more frequently, uh, which looks to concur, which looks to concur in March as well, um, with this pattern. And then a very, very close analog. I mean, this analog so far has been spot on. Winter of 2013 to 2014 is looking very, very close to this winter. So I'm gonna follow that one as the main analog. So, those are the final details. I hope you enjoyed this video. Tried to keep it quick. Tried to make sure you guys all enjoyed. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.